Welcome to the Corber Lang channel. Today I'm going to be taking a close look at my G.I. Joe 1988 Rolling Thunder. And as long as G.I. Joe has the Rolling Thunder, Cobra doesn't stand a chance. Well, we're going to be taking a look at this bad boy too. First I want to show you the back of the box and some of the features we're going to be taking a look at. Right there in the top left we have the pivoting laser gun. Uh, just down below and all the way around we have four machine guns. Eight wheels on this thing. It's got the tactical missiles all the way around. A removable swiveling rocket launcher right there in the center. There at the front, at the very front, there we have that chin machine gun. On top there we have gun radar, satellite dish. In the center there, that's where the lightning missiles are stored. There's the ATSV. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. That is just beautiful artwork. It's a pretty big box. On the bottom right, they got a picture there of Armadillo, which comes with the Rolling Thunder. If you check out uh, Famba BX257, I think, he's got a really thorough review of the Rolling Thunder, and he he mentions there that Armadillo is uh, made up of other body parts, except for the head sculpt is original, so you can check out his video on the Rolling Thunder if you want to see which body parts before we get into the review, I just wanted to show you this pamphlet I had. It's some nice artwork of the Rolling Thunder. On the other side here, it's got a little information. I'm just going to read it to you here. Cobra will never be victorious as long as Rolling Thunder is in operation. This formidable, nearly indestructible eight-wheeled vehicle features a deployable scout vehicle large pivoting turret four-wing mounted gun station, 15 tactical missiles for fast strike capabilities, machine gun and two large rockets, each containing eight cluster bombs. Includes Rolling Thunder, Driver, other figures sold separately. And I present to you the 1988 Rolling Thunder. Let's take a look. I'm going to start with the weaponry as always, but I'm going to go from the front this time. We have the chin gun on the front, chin machine gun, which actually extends the length of this thing with this thing fully pointed backwards to around three feet, <laughs> but uh, that's without it even transformed. But uh, there's the chin gun. And we have gun radar on the top. The dish uh, swivels and uh, the gun turns left to right, 360. Uh, we have these four winged machine guns that kind of go up and down and swivel. All four of those with the, the seat belts, which I'm not a fan of. And back in the 80s, I wasn't a fan of wearing the seat belt either. We have this uh, rocket launcher, which is removable, or it actually stays attached to the hatch when it lifts up. Oh, it's not even on. But uh, this thing pivots around so you can point your rockets any direction. That rocket launcher. Uh, it's got these tactical missiles on the bottom. And it has this big pivoting laser, laser gun with three missiles on it. And the figures go, you know, inside. There's not much cover on this, but uh, it's pretty cool. Like they go in there really deep, so only their head's exposed. That's it for the outside. Uh, to finish off the weaponry, you got to kind of open this thing up. Let's do it. Here's the ramps. This is the ATSV, the all terrain scout vehicle with the 50 caliber machine gun on the front. It swivels. Down the ramp she goes. And this thing it just kind of came apart a bit, but that one's supposed to sit. Look like that. But yeah, as this lifts up, that stays attached. Or you can remove it and set it down on the ground if you want, like on the front of the box. So, you have to pull that out a little bit further. And then the lightning missiles, they click into place. And uh, that's the, the cluster bombs inside. These are the biggest uh, rockets I think that G.I. Joe has in any vehicle. 
And like most uh, G.I. Joe vehicles that are large especially, they always seem to have extra vehicles with it, which I always thought was nice. All right, let's take a quick look at Armadillo. Didn't come with any weapons. Uh, let's focus on him. A non-removable helmet. Okay, I'm going to continue this review with the Cobra Rolling Thunder. This one is a custom that a friend, uh, Forch, uh, painted up. Uh, did a wonderful job. have the Cobra one. You can see some of the nice detail in there. Pretty nice. And then, uh, can't really see in there yet. Uh, get some pictures of the interior where Armadillo would sit, but there's this little latch, so it makes it easier to grab onto. There's those darn seat belts to pain to put on. So this thing fully extended, let's just take a look, with both guns extended, I got 42 inches, that's over 100 centimeters, that's almost 107 centimeters long. <laughs> 16 inches with the rockets fully extended, so if you were to put it under a shelf, and maybe to give you a comparison. Just to give you an idea how massive this vehicle uh, is. Wow. There's the Rattler. Land right on there. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you had fun. We'll see you next time. Take care. G.I. Joe and Cobra have entered a new era of conflict. Both sides have enlarged their land, air, and sea arsenals by adding an impressive array of highly superior battle vehicles like the Cobra Bug, the G.I. Joe Rolling Thunder, and the Phantom X-19 Stealth Fighter. To enhance their ground assault capabilities, the G.I. Joe formed Battle Force 2000. <laughs> Sounds so old now, it's 20 years ago. Uh, the most advanced combat unit ever created. To uh, counteract this futuristic group of military brilliance, Destro, a longtime enemy of G.I. Joe, has broken away from Cobra and formed his own army, the Iron Grenadiers. Destro, once Cobra's chief weapon supplier, is sure to intensify the conflict as he pursues his own ambition of global conquest. Stage your own four-way struggle between G.I. Joe, Battle Force 2000, Cobra, and Destro. The future of the world hangs in the balance.